everybody. Welcome back to our intro to the Reformer series. I hope you're feeling good and excited to build on from last session. So let's go ahead and get right to that. We are going to start actually seated with your feet on the floor. Have some springs on your uh, machine so that it's not going to move around. Feet about hip width distance apart. And then just rest your hands on your thighs. Take a breath in and feel tall through your spine. And then as you breathe out, just nod your chin, curl forward and let your hands slide down your shins, wherever is comfortable. And then as you inhale, you're just gonna return back up to sitting tall. Good, and then do that again. Nod the chin, exhale to fold. Think about drawing your abdominals back away from the floor and then come on up. Very good, couple more times. So getting our spine moving, getting into our breath, and just kind of waking up the body. Good, let's do this one more time. So fold forward, this time we're gonna hold here and take a couple breaths in and out in this curl. So inhale, feel that air expanding into the back of the body. And then exhale, feel that ab connection as you breathe out. Good, one more time. Inhale, feel wide and open. And then on this exhale, let it roll you all the way back up to sitting. Very good, let's do that again. Inhale tall, exhale, keep your pelvis stable and make the spine be the mover here. Now hold your round back and take two inhales and exhales. <sighs> Try to relax the shoulders. And then this last exhale will bring you all the way back up to sitting. Good, now place one hand on the carriage next to you. Reach the other arm open to the side. Breathe in and float the arm overhead. And then as you exhale, you're gonna fold into a side bend. Inhale, come back up tall. Exhale, lower the arm out to the side. And we do that again, inhale to lift. Exhale, keep both sitting bones heavy. Feel a nice stretch through the top side. Inhale, come up. Exhale, lower down. Do that one more time. Inhale, get tall. And then exhale, pour your spine over. Very good, let's do that on the other side. New hand down, other arm out. Breathe in as we lift the arm. Exhale, side bend. Try to keep the knees tracking straight forward, up, and then return the arm. So four counts. One, we lift. Two, we fold. Three, we return. And then four, we open. Very good, you guys. Let's do two more here. Really stretching out that lat and underarm. Very good. All right, one last time. Kind of nice to get the body moving a little bit before we lay down on the carriage. Ha, huh. okay, lovely. So we're gonna get into our leg and footwork next. So you should know how to set up your machine, have your headrest where you like, and then go ahead and put on your desired springs, whether that's two reds and one blue could go maybe a little bit heavier this time than you did last time if you wanna challenge yourself. So come on down to your side. So we had a good introduction to our footwork last time. So we're gonna kind of revisit and build a little bit onto what we learned. So we're gonna start this time on our toes in a V. So our heels are together, our toes are apart, ankles are lifted up into that high half toe position, and then arms are by your sides. You can rock your hips front to back a couple times until you land in your neutral spine. All right, here we go. So let's take our breath in to prepare. And then exhale, the heels stay still in space as we push off the bar and then we return. Good, exhale away and then inhale, return. Very good, so getting grounded, evening out your tempo, so same amount of time to push and pull. Very good. Okay, so it's kind of nice to revisit exercises like this. It helps us to really master and get them into our body. Very 
Good. Feel the ribs heavy on the mat. That's it. Make sure the shoulders aren't caving up and forward for two, for one, and then come all the way down. Very good. All right, we're gonna wrap our toes around the bar now. So go to parallel. You can either have your ankles and knees touching all the way together or have a slight bit of space. You decide. So we curl the toes, we drop the heels. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, press. That's it, good. So we talked last time about getting the knees straight but not necessarily locking them out. So try to come back to that sensation of connecting to the thighs without jamming into the backs of the knees. Very good. So there's a lot going on here. We have the curl of the toes to work the arches and then the hang of the heels to find the ankle stretch. Very good, last one. Oh, awesome job, okay. Switch to your heels now. If your legs are together, keep them that way. If they're slightly apart, they can stay that way as well. Inhale to prepare and then exhale to push out. Very nice. So the heels are on the bar and then your foot should be nice and vertical, okay? Almost like you were standing on a little floor. Very good. And the tempo is totally up to you. Feel free to take this nice and slow. Only if you're ready for some more dynamics can we go a little bit speedier. But make sure you're not rushing. You want to get to that full extended place every time. Two. And last one. Very good. All right, now keep your leg position as is. Move to the balls of the feet. So we're parallel in a high half toe. And then we'll use our exhale to push away. Inhale to return. So for our high half toe, our heel is staying still in space. So it holds that elevation all throughout. Very good, you guys. Listen to your body, make any spring adjustments that you need at any time. Yeah, sometimes the springs we start out with end up feeling a little too heavy by the end of the set. So choose accordingly for you. All right, now pause out to straight. I want you to drop one heel under the bar and lift the other one up high. So you're in this kind of pedal position of the feet and then raise both heels up to high half toe and switch. Good, so getting a nice calf and ankle stretch. Very good. That's it. So now let's start nice and slow and stretchy, going for a nice big range of motion. And then once you've found that, maybe pick up the speed a little bit just to get us moving. But see if you can keep that same deep stretch so we're not cutting off the movement. And then let's pause with one heel down and just hold for a little extended stretch. See if you can release the heel into a little bigger range. And then other side, hold it and then sink a little deeper. Very good. All right, bring the heels high and then come all the way down to the bottom. Excellent. Okay, now we're gonna go into a second position. So take your heels on slightly wider than your hips, but still parallel. So knees and toes pointing up. Okay, and then we're gonna press out from here. So kind of a wide parallel squat. Very good, push and pull. So all these different foot positions just give us a little bit of a different flavor of work for the muscles of our lower body. It's good to kind of get comfortable with them all so you feel nice and secure and strong in all these positions. Yeah, because in your regular life, your feet and your legs are going to end up in all sorts of different positions. So the more we can vary that positioning in our training, the more prepared we'll be in the rest of our life. Last one. All right, now leave the heels where they are. Only if this feels good on your hips and your knees will you do this. If it doesn't, remain parallel and repeat that one more time. 
if you'd like, we're gonna do an internal rotation. So I'm gonna knock my knees together and angle my toes inwards. So kind of like a pigeon toe, if you can see that. And it doesn't have to be so extreme, but just a slight inward knock of the knees, okay? So arms are down, the knees are touching at the bottom. Now as I push away, my knees will come apart by the time they're straight. And then as I come back down, I wanna get them together as soon as I can. So we push and the kneecaps come away from each other and then lower. Yeah, and this is an internal rotation coming from our hip. Yes, the feet are not the main event. It's really happening at the hip and then the ankles and knees are just kind of the trickle down effect from this turned in place. That's it, good. And if for any reason that doesn't jive with your body or it doesn't feel good, take a pass and go back to parallel. Yes, if it does feel good to you though, or even not, not, not bad, yeah, um, it's a good thing to work in this internal rotation to bring some balance to the muscles around the hip. Yeah, we're either parallel or turned out a lot. So whew, we don't get this one as much. All right, come on down. Now just take a little stretch, drop both of your knees to the right, and then both of your knees to the left. You should get a nice little thigh, hip and spine stretch. Very good. All right, roll over to your side and come up. We are gonna lighten up our springs. So go down to either a red and a blue, or uh, if you wanna go a little heavier, you could try two reds, okay? We are gonna expand on the hundreds exercise that we learned in the previous class. We are gonna now use the straps to do it. So it's gonna be way more challenging, okay? Uh, if you need to modify and do it without the straps, that is a really great choice, okay? So go ahead and lay down, grab your loops, hold them in your hands. We're gonna push out until our elbows can touch the mat. And then one by one, lift the legs up to tabletop with your imprinted spine, okay? From here, we're gonna do a little bit of a prep to get us up into the position. So just straighten your arms till your hands are by your sides. Now breathe out, nod your chin, and curl up into your flexion, kind of that ab prep shape we found before. Now lay your spine and head back down, and then bend the elbows. Do that again. I straighten the arms, I nod my chin, flex, and try to spread the shoulder blades wide lay back to the mat and then lower down. If you're feeling stuck, like your shoulders are too close to the shoulder rests, scoot forward a little bit. Now, lifting the head up might not feel great for everyone, so if that's you, don't lift the head and just focus on the arm press here, okay? All right, on our next one, we're gonna go into our hundred. So we straighten the arms, we curl up, and I want you to start beating your little tiny bongo drums. Now this shouldn't be a big wild movement. It's small and contained, and the carriage isn't even hardly moving. We're breathing in for five counts, and breathing out for five counts. Inhale, two, three, four, five, good. Now at any point, the head can come down to the carriage and the hands can continue. It's almost harder in a way. It really challenges your low abdominals when you put your head down, but it does take the heat off of your neck. So you decide, two more sets. Last time, get those shoulders up, 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 up. Now pause the arms, crunch up a little higher, bend your elbows and lay down. Whew. Wow, very different doing that with the straps. So well done giving that a try. Okay, next we're gonna put our feet in the straps. Uh, you can be on that red and a blue. You could also be on two reds if you're feeling ready for that. So if you need to change your springs, you can. We're gonna push out just like before. Get one foot in at a time. Remember to put the pressure on the rope so that this leg is free to come up. All right, and then we're gonna reach our legs out long. Arms come down next to you. You can be either neutral or imprinted wherever you feel secure. Let's breathe out to get ready. Feel your abdominals connecting and hugging around the spine. And then on your breath in, you float the legs straight up towards the ceiling and then exhale lower down. 
Very good. So this should look familiar from our last class. So just kind of getting back into the groove and getting our kind of self-oriented back with our feet in the straps. Good, now a little trick I like to use here is while you're lifting and lowering, just sneak the tips of your fingers under the small of your back. And when you lift the legs up, you shouldn't feel any extra pressure of the back on the hands, okay? If when your legs go up, you feel your low back smashing your hands, it means you're not stabilizing your spine. Okay, so this exercise isn't a spinal exercise, it's actually a leg and hip exercise. So the spine's job is to maintain neutral. And when you do that, you're gonna get a way better stretch and work for the legs. All right, now press the legs forward. That can just be a little tool in your toolbox to check in from time to time and make sure that your back is really staying still. Now let's go into some bend and stretches. So you're gonna come into tabletop and then push away. Inhale on the bend, exhale on the press. Good, make sure the knees aren't coming in so far that you feel like you're getting crushed by your thighs. Very good. And then same rules apply here as in our leg and footwork. You want the knees to get straight, but not hyperextended, so they have to kind of Hold back just before that last few degrees of overextension. All right, now pause with straight legs, just like we did in our footwork. We're gonna do internal rotation here. So I want you to turn your toes in, your heels swing apart from each other in this kind of pigeon-toed position. And then you're gonna keep that internal rotation and lift the legs up and then lower them back down. So inhale, lift, and just like in our leg and footwork, I know this position isn't necessarily great for everyone, so depending on how you're feeling, you can do parallel again instead of this internal rotation. Very good. Now pause with the legs long. This one feels a little awkward, but stay with me. Stay internally rotated. Your big toes are touching. Now bend your knees till they touch between the ropes and then push away and let your knees get back to straight. And then we do that again. Inhale, your knees knock together in between the straps and then push away and they separate. Good, you guys, couple more times. So it's the same mechanics as when we were turned in, pushing with our feet off of the bar. It's just a lot more precarious, yes, because these ropes make things less stable. Very good, that's it. Just that slight medial rotation from the hips. Awesome, you guys. Okay, now pause, reach out to the front. Let's even out by going into external rotation now. So our heels come together, toes go apart, and then lift and lower here, up and down. So we've kind of covered all the bases of parallel, turned in, and now turned out. So our hip joint should be feeling nice and balanced. Very good. Okay, now let's pause with our legs down on the diagonal keep turned out and I just want you to open up and out to a big straddle and then close your feet back down and together. So keeping our angle, aiming the feet out wide and then back in. And that straddle can be as big as you'd like as long as you can maintain the position of your spine. Yeah, and just find that sweet spot where you feel a nice stretch in the back of the legs. You feel like that femur kind of sits nicely in the hip through the straddle. Good, now find your straddle and stay there. Reach up and grab the ropes. The closer you hold to the loops, the better the stretch will be. And then just bend your elbows and give a little pull to increase that stretch. Very good, feel that nice inner thigh stretch. Now bend the knees, put the soles of the feet together, even your pinky toes, and then pull the straps down towards your body and feel that hip stretch deepen. So I'm kind of pulling up on the ropes to bring the feet closer to my body. 
And then you can take some little rocks from side to side across the back of your hips if that feels good. Awesome job. All right. Take your feet one by one out of the straps. Step down onto the foot bar. Lovely. Okay, we're going to go into a little mid-back series next, again, on either that red and blue or two reds. So if you still like your springs, you're probably good to just stay with what you were on for feet and straps. Now, you're going to place your hands up into the loops. Okay, and we're going to build on what we learned last time of our mid-back series. So legs come up to tabletop. Tuck under into your imprint. This time we're going to start with the arms reaching up towards the ceiling. You're going to take a breath in, keep those ankles drawn together, and then we're going to pull the arms down by our sides and then float back up towards the ceiling. Good. Exhale, really connecting under the armpits and then back up. Very good. Try to keep your lowest rib pressing down into the mat. All right, if you're feeling ready to advance this a little bit, we're gonna add the knot of our chin, the curl up of our spine, flexing our shoulder blades off the mat, and then release back down. Very good, exhale, nod and flex, and then release and lower. So good, you guys, couple more times here, round, and then release. Very good. Two more. Knees further from your chest is harder. Remembering you can cross the ankles to modify. And then come on down and set your feet down. Ooh, good. Okay, next we're going to go into a 45 degree uh, position. So think kind of V. So rather than a T, just out to the side, almost like cheerleader arms. Okay, legs come up and then we pull the hands down on that diagonal line and then open back out. Good, so just slightly wider than before. Good, that forces that shoulder to connect just a little differently in this new angle. Very good, okay. If the lifting of the head and the flexing of the spine was jamming for you, then feel free to keep it going. If that doesn't feel good today, leave your head down on the mat. Now remember, we wanna anticipate the curling up of the head and shoulders with that nod of the chin. That's it, two more times. Chin drops, spine flexes, and then one last time. And then come on down, very good. All right, set the feet down. Next, we're going to take arm circles here. So start with the fingertips up to the ceiling. Lift the legs up one by one. Okay, you're going to pull the arm straight down to start. Open out through a big T and then reach up to the ceiling. So we press through, open and lift. So now getting a little bit more complex coordination wise combining these different arm movements. Very good, you guys. All right, we'll just do one more circle. I'm just gonna leave my head down on these today. We'll add the spine to these later on. Now pause with the arms up and we'll reverse. Open to a T, then pull to the hips, and then raise the arms high. Good, open on the inhale. Pull the arms to the sides, exhale, and then up. Open, pull, and then lift. So good. Last two in this direction. Ribs heavy. Last one. Ooh, awesome job, you guys. Okay, come down. Hang your straps up one by one. And then roll to your side and come up. Very nice. Okay, I hope things are feeling more comfortable and like you're getting more familiar with these exercises. So next, we are actually gonna do some seated arm work facing your foot bar. So go a little bit lighter, maybe one blue spring. Heavier, you could do one red spring. In between, if you have a light spring to put on with the blue, that might be kind of a perfect happy medium. 
Okay, so sitting, like we talked about last time, you do whatever sitting position works best for you. I'm gonna sit crisscross, sit on a cushion or on your box if you need to, and you could also have your legs going straight front if that's more comfortable. So reach back, we're gonna do some front rowing preps. So you're gonna hold the straps in your hands, sitting up tall. Now this is arm work, but since the springs or the ropes are coming from behind us, it's actually a lot of ab work to avoid getting pulled back this way. So it's really full body work going on. So stack tall, ribs are over your hips. You wanna have your elbows just ever so slightly micro bent. Inhale to get ready. Now exhale, you're gonna raise your arms up. They can come up about as high as like your eyebrows, let's say, and then you're gonna slowly reach them back towards the ground. Yes, take these first couple repetitions. See if you like your springs. It's a good time to make any adjustments that you need. Yes, if you have two sets of loops, you can always switch to the longer of the two and that's an easy way to make things a little bit lighter. Very good, try to relax the knees towards the floor. Last two. That's it, nice long steady breath. Keep those ropes pulling evenly and then come all the way back down. Okay, next we're gonna go into second position. This one is not easy, so lighten up if you need to. You're gonna open your arms out to kind of a T with rounded elbows, almost like you're getting ready to give somebody a hug, and the hands are in front of your body. That's important. We don't want them to get pulled behind. So keep them angled forward. Inhale, get ready. Exhale, you're gonna close and touch your fingertips together, and then open back out wide. So this one's called second position or even sometimes hug a tree, as you can see why. It kind of looks like what we're doing. Exhale to round. Good, feel tall through your lower back. Make sure you're not getting bogged down and pulled behind your tailbone. Good, so we're getting a nice stretch for the pecs and the chest and then work to reconnect. Last two. Last one. Ah, oh, very nice. Okay, take a little break. Good. All right, we're just gonna do one more exercise facing this way. It's called offering. So I'll teach you kind of the basic way first and then we'll add on to it a little bit. So palms facing the ceiling, elbows bent back behind your body. Okay, kind of shrug your shoulders up and down a couple times. So we wanna land with our shoulders kind of halfway between these two extremes. So they're not up in our ears, they're not jamming to the floor, they're just kind of comfortably neutral in line with our collarbones. That's for all of the arm work, but that's a good little trick to find your zone. So now as you exhale, pretend like you're holding two little dishes of candy. You're gonna reach your arms out without dropping the dishes and then come back in. Yes, so no spilling, no dumping your hands down, kind of keep those pinky fingers spinning forward. That's it, nice and slow and controlled. Breathe out and reach. Inhale to return. Good, feel your shoulder blades nice and stable, so they shouldn't feel like they're winging in and out. Last one. Okay, take a breather. Last thing here, we're gonna add on an open and close of the arm. So instead of a two count exercise, it becomes a four count exercise. Here we go. So palms facing the ceiling. You're never gonna dump your little candy dishes on the floor. Exhale, start the same way. We reach the arms forward. Now as we inhale, open the arms to the side. Keep the hands slightly in front of you. Close back together. You still haven't dumped your bowls and then bend back to the start. And we do that again, exhale to reach, inhale to open, feel tall, 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 exhale, close, and then come back in. Very good, you guys, couple more times. Reach, open, close, and return. All right, two more, try to get taller as the set goes on, not shorter, it's easy to get kind of bogged down. Last one, open, close, and then relax. 
so good. All right, hang your straps up. We are gonna turn around, face our pulleys now, and we're gonna expand on some of the exercises that we did facing this way last time. So some of those back rowing preps, but now we're gonna get the spine moving with it a little bit more. These ones feel really good. So let's do just a single red spring. For your sitting position for this one, um, I'm gonna be seated down on the carriage with my legs crisscrossed through the shoulder rests. A really good modification, if this is uncomfortable, you could put the legs on the outsides of the shoulder rests and kind of squeeze in with your inner thighs. You could sit up on a cushion or sit up on a box, okay? So pick what works best for you. You do wanna make sure that there's at least a palm's width of space behind your tailbone and the edge of the mat, because we're gonna be rolling back and wanna have some give back there. So sit nice and tall. You're gonna hold the straps in your hands, hold with fists, so a closed grip, and then touch your knuckles together. Sit nice and tall. All we're gonna do is just really basic, warm up this action of the arm. So I'm gonna pull my knuckles to almost touch my sternum and then reach back away. So my elbows are wide. It's almost like a funky kind of circular bicep curl. All right, and my knuckles are staying touching. Very good. Okay, and even if you need to soften your knees a little bit, it's all good. Most important thing here is being able to sit up comfortably on your sitting bones. All right, now pause with the arms forward. We're gonna add on a C curve of the spine. When we pull the knuckles to our chest, we're gonna curl our tailbone under, roll back into a C curve and lean away from our legs. Now just reverse that to sit back up tall. So all at once, I'm scooping, tucking under and pulling the knuckles to my chest. And then my knuckles reach front as I stack back up to my neutral spine. Good, make sure the shoulders aren't creeping up to the ears. Hands kind of come low down on your sternum as they find that pull. Very good, couple more times. So really tuck under and kind of present your sacrum down towards the carriage. All right, now let's put this into more of a pattern. So roll back there and stay. Hold here, we're gonna inhale and maintain this position. Exhale, you're gonna round up and over the legs like there's a beach ball on your lap that you're settling over. And then as you inhale, articulate your back up tall and then you're back in our start position with the big circle of your arms. And we do that again. Exhale, knuckles pull and we roll back. Now breathe in and keep connected to your abdominals as you hold here. Now exhale, draw the abs back. Almost feel like this is an ab curl over your legs, arms and ropes relax. And then I stack my spine and expand my arm circle. So good, four counts. One, we roll. Two, we breathe in and hold. Four, think of going up to go over. You'll feel your carriage hit the stopper. Drop your head to stretch and then come up tall. So good, you guys, two more times. This coordination from this exercise is gonna reappear again and again throughout the repertoire. So this is a really good one to solidify in your muscle memory. Okay, let's do one more time all the way through. Inhale, keep those ribs connected, and then dive up and over the legs. Whew, very good. Okay, we're gonna add on a rotation to this now. This is one of my favorites to get into the obliques. Feels really good. So arms are in a circle. We'll start the same way. Exhale, we roll back. Inhale and stay. Now exhale, don't move your carriage underneath you. You're just gonna twist off of center to one side and then come back center. Other side, we breathe out as we twist. Inhale, center, and then exhale, dive over the legs. And then inhale, sit up tall. And then we do that again. Exhale, roll back. Inhale, hold. You can try to alternate which side you twist to first, whether it's right or left. And then back. Find yourself in the middle and then dive over your legs. Very good. Do that a couple more times. So just one twist to either side per set. Exhale, roll. Inhale, hold. Exhale when we twist. Inhale when we come and find center. Other side. 
and then dive. Inhale up, so good. So we've just inserted more movements into this original exercise. Inhale, we stay, exhale. Rope stay tight, carriage stays still. If your carriage is moving around a ton, it's gonna creep more up into your shoulders and your neck, whereas we wanna keep the work down into the abdominals. Good, let's do this two more times through. It feels really good once we get it. And then we twist from right to left or left to right, whichever, center and then up and over. Oh, very good. All right, last one. I just love this one. I think it feels so good to hold that spring tension and then twist. Twist, center, and then dive. Very good. All right, last exercise here, kind of building on this coordination. Arms are gonna reach out, palms are gonna face up. So we're gonna do a bicep curl and you're gonna tuck and roll away from your legs. Now hold here in your C curve and do maybe three or four bicep curls while you maintain your back here. Good. Now one more, you're gonna pause in the curl with your elbows bent, inhale, hold. Now exhale, fold up and over the beach ball just like we did before, and then articulate your spine up and extend the elbows. And we're ready to go again. Exhale, we roll back. Inhale to extend the elbows, exhale, pull. Inhale, two more. Now hold here, take a breath in, and then dive up and over. Whew. All right, let's do one more time. Ready, roll back and hold it. Keep the abs knitted together. Make sure your neck isn't tensing up. You can turn it side to side to release it. Pause in the curl, and then dive up and over the legs. Whew. Awesome job, okay. Go ahead and either hang your straps up or place them onto the floor. Okay, next we're gonna go into an exercise called knee stretches. Um, so let's do a red and a blue spring. This is one of those ones where you can go lighter to challenge the abs and the front of the body, heavier to challenge the glutes and the back of the body. So you could even do two reds, that's very challenging though. Or one red would be really hard on the abs. So a red and a blue is kind of a huh, nice happy medium, okay? So we are gonna be on our knees, which we haven't really done yet. Um, if you need some extra cushioning, feel free to place that under your kneecaps. We are gonna have our hands on the foot bar. You're gonna tuck your toes under and place your feet back against the shoulder rests. Um, now I know this position might feel kind of tender at first on your feet, but it's actually a really good thing to stretch out the muscles underneath the arches of your feet. So if you can bear it, try to have that uh, kind of fanning of your toes, okay? So you're gonna grip your hands onto the foot bar. All 10 fingers, even your thumbs, are on top of the bar, okay? Don't be tempted to hook your thumbs under. That puts your shoulders in a funky position. So think of kind of spinning open through your shoulders. I want you to sit back until you're hovering slightly off of your heels. Now kind of fix your hip joint right where it is in space. And we're just gonna do a little prep here. So we're just gonna go into a cat and a cow stretch. So rounding the spine, tucking the tail and the head, and then inhale, you release the spine and go the other direction, stretching out the abdominals. And then we do that again always keeping a nice press down of the palms into the bar. That's gonna help you stay connected through the shoulders and the core. That's it. Now this is kind of tricky to do this here while hovering the tail. It's actually kind of tiring on your legs, but give it your best. Try to kind of keep this hip joint where it is, and then we're kind of moving the pelvis and spine around that fixed hip. All right, now pause in neutral. So somewhere halfway between those two positions, lock your shoulders into place. So your shoulders are the stabilizers, your hips and your knees are the movers. You're gonna push your legs behind you and come back in. Now on this red and blue spring, 
it's a pretty good amount of spring. So you're gonna feel like it's harder to push out and then you kind of get pulled back in pretty quickly. Okay, that's normal. If it's so hard that you can't push the carriage fully out, then lighten up your springs. Okay, now there's no need to get your hip fully open. You almost wanna be coming in faster before that happens. So I don't get stuck out here and then I restart. I kind of barely keep my hip a little flexed, even at the end range. Now, the faster this goes, the trickier it is. So see if you can speed it up a little bit, emphasizing the return. So imagine there was like a little symbol right here, and you're gonna come in and try to hit the symbol. In, in, in. So it's a little slower on the push, faster on the pull. Three, two, one, and then come in and relax. Oh, that is a thigh burner for sure. Okay, now we're gonna try that in a rounded spine. If you wanna experiment with going different on your springs, that's not a bad idea. Sit your hips back, go into that curved position that we found in our cat stretch kind of prep. Here we go. Now again, the shoulders don't move. It's our legs that push and pull, push and pull. Now only press back as far as you can keep your rounded spine. So this one is gonna be a smaller range of motion. Breathe out when your knees come in, almost like they're hitting the air out of your lungs. In, in, keep that tail curled. Three, two, one. Wow, that is a really tricky one. Good job. All right, go ahead and we're gonna do a little elephant stretch next. I'm gonna do this on a single red, which is harder on the abs. If you need support, have a red and a blue, or maybe a red and a white, whatever your lightest spring is to help you. More weight gives you more support on this one. So grab, wrap your fingers around the foot bar, carefully stand up without your carriage moving. Now, last time we did elephant with the heels down, Feel free to repeat that if that works better for you. But we're gonna go up on high half toe this time, which is a lot more ab work. So if you go too high on your toes, it's gonna work against you. So be on kind of a medium high half toe. Now, just like before, lean back so there's more weight in your legs than in your arms. So your hands, you should be able to feel like if you wanted to, you could kind of tap the bar, okay? Lean back, knees a little soft if you need to. Draw the ribs up. Let's start in a flat, long spine and then push the carriage out a few inches. Come back in and try to hit the stopper with your carriage. Inhale, exhale. Very good. So you have to kind of use some restraint now that your heels are lifted because there's a lot more range of motion available to you, but we're not taking it, we're not going into a full plank. My sitting bones are staying pointing up the whole time, okay? The work on this one is on the return of the carriage, pulling from the abdominals. Last two. If you're getting too tired, come down to flat feet instead. Now pause with the carriage in. Let's try this with a rounded back. So we see curve. We feel those abs connected. We push out a little bit and then pull all the way back. Small range out, full return. Inhale out, exhale when we need the abs more, which is on the pull in. So good, make sure the shoulders aren't overdoing it. Tugging up into the ears for three, for two, Last one, and then step one foot down at a time. Okay, for our cool down stretch, we are gonna do the mermaid. So similar kind of building on to how we warmed up. If you remember how we did these side body stretches, sitting facing one side, except we're gonna utilize the machine a little bit more. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to sit. I'm also gonna show you an alternative sitting position with a platform extender. So. You're gonna sit facing the side. You're gonna bring your leg that's closest to the shoulder rests up onto the machine and put your shin up against the shoulder blocks. This other foot tucks up against your thigh. So your legs are in this kind of S shape. 
going towards the shoulder blocks. If that doesn't feel good, you could sit crisscross. You could sit with this shin leg. Instead of here, you could bring it and let it hang off the front. You could hang both feet off, which is easier if your machine is taller. Or if you happen to have one of these, a platform extender, a really nice way to do this, is whichever way you're facing, the further back shoulder rest, you're gonna take this and line it up in front of there, but leave enough space between the extender and the shoulder rest for your shin. And then you just sit your hips up on here and then you have a little bit of boost and it makes it a lot more comfortable in the hips and the knees. So pick your poison. No matter how you're sitting, the upper body work is gonna be the same. So you're gonna place your nearest hand on the foot bar slightly in front of your shoulder. The other arm reaches open with the palm up. So this should feel similar to how we warmed up. So now we're gonna inhale, raise the arm. It's the same breath pattern as earlier too. Exhale, we're gonna side bend over the springs and get that glorious stretch. Inhale to come back up tall, and then exhale, place the hand on a shoulder rest. Now, we're gonna go other side. Raise the hand off the foot bar, inhale. Exhale, stretch up and over the legs. Inhale, sit up. Exhale, grab the bar. And then we do the other side. Inhale, raise the arm. Exhale, really powerfully press from that bottom shoulder. Ribs draw back. Inhale, come up tall. Exhale to lower. Very good. Inhale, lift. Exhale, you can pull with this hand on the shoulder block to give you more range. Very good, you guys. All right, let's do this one more time to both sides. Inhale, lift. The tendency with this one is for our ribs to be jutting forward, kind of over too far. So as you come up through center, you almost want to lean your weight back just a little bit. That'll give you more stretch through the hips and make sure you're not overly jutting the chest out. Okay, very good. If you have a platform extender on, you're just going to slide it forward so that it's in line with the opposite shoulder rest. Okay, now let's turn and face the other side. So face your new direction with your feet down. You bring the nearest to the shoulder block leg up, rest the shin up against them, and then the other foot crosses over, foot against your thigh. All right, so making sure we're not leaning forward, but like our back is up against a straight back chair. Here we go. Inhale, we float. This foot bar hand is slightly in front of our body and then we side bend. And it's okay, this sitting bone will get a little bit light when you find your biggest side bend. Just try to settle them back down when you come up tall. Very good, so we inhale to float the arm. It's always an exhale when we side bend. Inhale up, exhale lower, inhale lift. Yeah, really taking your time, finding each of these positions. It's kind of nice to slow down and reconnect to our breath at the end of class. Yeah, we were doing a lot of new things, so that kind of sometimes can let our breath get away from us. All right, very last one. Very nicely done. And with that, we are all done with today's intro to the reformer workout. I hope you enjoyed it and learned some new things. And I can't wait to see you back here for the next one. Thank you so much. Bye bye. You did it. Way to go on completing today's workout. I hope you feel amazing. If you want to see even more from Real Good Pilates, click the link down below or right up here to head to my website and claim your seven day free trial for the Real Good Pilates on demand subscription platform where you'll find even more fun and challenging ways to work out with me that are all completely ad free plus tons of subscription exclusive workouts that you won't find anywhere else. So I hope you'll try it out and I can't wait for you to join me for even more Real Good Pilates. I'll see you over there. Bye.